Okay, hi. So in this video, we're going to be speaking about the process of decay. Now, we've seen in previous videos how energy moves up the food chain, if you like, in terms of biomass. And now, if this was a one-way process and energy would only move up the chain, then once it gets there, where does the energy go after that? If it was not a cycle, then we would eventually run out of energy because we'd have all this energy just stored in the consumers. Luckily, it's not a one-way process and the process which sort of continues the cycle, if you like, turns the wheel, is decay. Now, there are a few things which are going to decay. One of those is, of course, waste material. So, waste is going to decay. Plants shed their leaves as well. Some animals shed their skins. All of that organic matter is going to be decayed. So that's shedding. And also, of course, eventually, everything is going to die. So dead organisms will be recycled as well. So all of these things will be broken down by organisms known as decomposers. Decomposers. Now that's a broad term for an organism which is going to be involved in the decay process. Now these decomposers are normally going to be either bacteria, bacteria or fungi. Fungi. So microorganisms are normally the decomposers. However, before this, often, if let's say you have a fresh uh, corpse um, or fresh dead body of any animal, you sometimes get things which are known as detritus feeders beginning the process because detritus feeders are normally animals. So some types of worm and maggots, they feast on the dead remains and then they digest those remains themselves and they produce waste themselves. And that waste is then broken down by our decomposers, which are normally your bacteria and fungi. Okay, now it's important to note that there are um, specific conditions which allow the decay process to occur or which allow it to occur at its optimal rate. And so as an example, I'm sure perhaps you've seen this occur when you've left bread in the cupboard for too long. So you leave your bread in the cupboard and you get these things here, which are patches of mold. And that mold is actually the decomposers breaking down the bread. So the bread has gone off. Obviously, this is not safe to eat anymore. But that's because we have these organisms breaking down the bread and digesting it. This is decay. Now this will happen when you leave your bread in the cupboard, but what about if you leave bread in the freezer? Well, if you leave bread in the freezer, so in the freezer, often you will not see mold. So food lasts a long time. So it lasts a long time. And this is because you are going against one of the main conditions for decay to occur. And so those conditions are, first of all, it needs to be warm. Warm. So in our cupboard, it's about room temperature, and that's perfectly fine for mould to start growing or for other decay organisms to start growing and doing their thing. If we stored bread at 37 degrees Celsius, it would go off even quicker because this is even better temperature. Um, but in the warm, this will occur. Also, it occurs best in moist conditions. And so if you have something which has been vacuum packed, and so you're not allowing any moisture in, or if it's stored in a completely dry environment and there's no water whatsoever allowed in, then that means that decay will occur way slower. So, whereas if we obviously left bread out and it was allowed to soak up moisture from the air, then it would go off much quicker. This is actually because it makes the um, decomposers 
the decomposers, it allows them to dissolve their food. So they can dissolve their food, which obviously aids digestion. So it dissolves food. Aids their digestion and stops them from drying out and being killed. In a warm environment, it allows chemical reactions, chemical reactions to occur. There we go. To occur quickly. And of course, digestion is just a big load of chemical reactions occurring. And so if this can happen quickly, then you are going to get quicker digestion, quicker decay. Important here is that if we freeze um, our food, then decomposition is going to happen way slower because the reactions can't occur quickly and it's not optimum temperature for enzymes to work. So I'll mention enzymes here as well. Enzymes. And bearing in mind that we would like it to be warm but not boiling hot, if it was too hot, the enzymes would denature. So we've met that term before, but the enzymes would denature. And that means that they won't work at all. So this will probably kill your decay organism if you denature the enzymes. And that's why cooking will often kill um, bacteria and it will allow food to be eaten. Okay, and lastly, uh, just like us, decomposers are organisms and they need to respire. And therefore, we need a good level of oxygen in order for decay to occur effectively. So lots of oxygen, it allows respiration. And that is important for our decomposers. Because respiration provides them the energy to do their job. If they can't respire, then it's not going to happen. Now that's all well and good, but you might be thinking, well... Yes, I guess recycling the energy is going to be important, but for us, all we've seen so far is mouldy bread, and so obviously the decomposition and decay process is actually quite a pain in the backside for us. Well, that's true in this case, but there are a few examples of when decay is extremely important for us. Now, here is one of those examples. So this here is a compost heap. Compost heap and the compost heap is made up of different parts of vegetables so when you peel your fruits you put the peels in there um, different vegetable cuttings or plant cuttings that you don't need weeds etc are all put in there so it's made up of plant matter plant matter you then leave it out in the open and it's important that this is done and this allows um, decay to occur. So decay occurs and what this bloke is doing here is he is aerating the compost heap. So if you mix the compost heap about and you chuck it all about it means that oxygen can get to all of it rather than just the top and that allows the decomposition to occur as quickly as possible. And when it's all said and done and this is all broken down, you will have a load of digested material which makes a great fertilizer or at least a component of fertilizer. And why that the reason why that happens, sorry, is that we have allowed the digestion of the plant matter and therefore the products of that digestion are going to be very nutrient rich. And providing those nutrients to soil is going to allow more plants to benefit from those nutrients. Okay, so very important there. Now another one is with treating our sewage. So this here is a sewage plant. So sewage plants. And the reason, of course, these are so important is that all the waste we produce, um, obviously our toilets lead into the sewage system that would obviously not be safe to just release back into the environment without doing anything with it because it's stuff that we've digested and we don't know exactly what it's going to be containing now what we do is we have these plants where we allow decomposers to break down the feces and the urine and everything that we have produced so decomposers 
breakdown human waste. So they break down the human waste and then they release nutrients. So the nutrients are released into the water and these nutrients, because they are no longer stored in the feces or in the urine or whatever, they are now safe. And so the water can then safely be released back into uh, large bodies of water such as rivers or the ocean. So nutrients are released. That means that the water is safe for release into rivers, ocean. Okay, so it's very important for us because obviously then we can reuse the water. We are going to end up using the water again because obviously humans use a great deal of water. And so it's important for us to make sure that it is safe and it is clean when, we, uh, when we've used it. Okay, so that was a brief overview of decay. I hope that's made things uh, a little clearer for you. Uh, if you do have any questions, please do feel free to send me an email using the link provided or to comment in the box below and I'll be sure to get back to you. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.